All righty. All right, so we're starting now. Uh, I'm still admitting some people. Wow, that's quite a quite a quite a group today. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'll just introduce myself. Um, I'm Justin Tadlock, um, developer of relations uh, uh, in, with Automatic, and we work on mostly WordPress.org stuff. Um, a, a lot, at least me, a lot around the themes uh, theme area. Yeah, and uh, Damon Cook here. I am a developer advocate with WP Engine and have been in the WordPress ecosystem for over a decade and in the past always a front-end developer, so working with WordPress themes. So. Um, Daisy, unfortunately, was not feeling under the weather, weather today, so she uh, she's taking some rest. Good for her. Hopefully, she feels better soon. So, yeah, there's a bit of a cold going around. I think for everybody, and I, and I do yeah. apologize ahead of time if uh, uh, I was uh, like I was telling Damon earlier. If I I like getting a five minute coughing spell, I might have to leave y'all. Um, but hopefully, that's not the case. So uh, we're just here to talk about themes today, um, yeah. and we can, uh, if we want to, you want to just, uh, like, we can open up the floor to anybody who's got questions, or we can just kind of dive into uh, things we might have, we have listed. Well, t why don't you tell us what's on your, uh, uh, on your list, if you have an agenda, and we'll fill it in. <laughs> okay, <laughs> uh, Damon, like, you have that pulled up, right? Sure, yeah. Um... Let me share my screen real quick. I have here, um, this is the phase two customization track uh, issue, tracking issue. This is uh, mostly just because this is what Anne has been focusing on, but also, yeah, this is kind of where a lot of the efforts are being uh, poured into lately. Um, and I'm just scrolling down to the styles area because that kind of seems to, you know, be in this group's wheelhouse. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Should I dive into any of the any of these peaking interest here? Or this is kind of a new. Yes, input for custom CSS. I have heard yeah. a lot of lot of people requesting that. Yeah, and this is. Um, this is progressing along pretty good. I think it's beyond design at this point. And I want to throw a related question to that. There are some things that we can do in theme.json or with Gutenberg yet. So how would mixing both theme.json and a regular imported CSS style sheet affect performance overall? Um, I don't think it's gonna uh, would have much of an effect on performance at all. Um, uh, everything in theme JSON is going to be inlined in the uh, head of your sites uh, on a per block basis. Um, right. So, and but whatever gets run through theme JSON has to go through the through the style engine. That that has always been my concern. Yeah, um, I don't have it on hand, but I know there was a recent uh, commit that actually saved, uh, like cut back quite a bit on like, uh, well, help the performance uh, on the style engine. Um, I think there's some talk maybe of doing a little caching uh, of that. That may have been what the ticket was. And okay. I hate to even uh, tr try to uh, attempt to pull it up right now. Um, Okay, it, no. it was just it was on my radar a few days ago. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sorry for just jumping in like that, but there hey, is a follow up question that I'll ask later. Okay. Um, yeah, I feel like performance wise, like we, I mean, we're in a really good spot in terms of like style sheets. Um, um, like, I mean, you get a lot of this. Like this is automatic uh, inlining of the styles uh, is great for the front end uh, because you're only using the CSS that you need. 
um, on, on any given page. Um, you know, I think, you know, we're hopefully getting away, away from the days of like two and 300 uh, kilobyte, you know, CSS style sheets uh, that we've had in recent years with like the big themes and um, in terms of like adding the custom CSS on top of that, um, I'm guessing that's like all going to be loaded at once uh, on a page. Um, I don't. I don't think it'll be parsed uh, in any way because it'd just be custom. And I see that more as a user feature anyway. Uh, I. I don't know about like using that a whole lot from the a theme developer's perspective. Um, I'd like to like push theme authors like completely into theme J, uh, dot JSON as much as possible. Um, um, yeah, I've, yeah, yeah, there's also, uh, that I, I'm trying to remember if I published it. Uh, there's a, what's not published yet. I do have a post coming out on the developer blog, which we just soft launched uh, yesterday. I don't know if anybody's seen that yet. Um, uh, the WordPress developer blog. And it will like go into some of the uh, performance uh, enhancements that you could do as a theme author. Um, hopefully we'll get that live here in the next couple of weeks, um, that post. Oh yeah, it looks like a uh, dev in the chat. That hopefully that answers kind of directs to your question too about where does custom CSS go now that the customizer is gone. Hopefully in this in this uh, upcoming feature of adding that they're working through right now, of having a custom field for custom CSS on a per block level will uh, fit that need. But with that being said, yeah, I, I think theme.json is really kind of the first stop along that path of where we should focus um, getting styling and appearance parameters kind of set up for a theme. Yeah. Yes. I, I haven't tried it for 6.1 yet, but what I discovered making a, a block theme for 6.0 was there were a very few things that I couldn't seem to control through either the global styles or the uh, 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 theme JSON. And I just put styles into a you know style.css file, and there were only a handful of them. There, there were very few. Um, and in at least one case, it was a, a style for something th that was being pulled in from a plugin and, you know, wasn't actually part of core. Yeah, I think two areas that I've seen that are that are really getting some activity are positioning, um, which is a pretty complex, you know, solve to, to, to dive into, you know, having like a maybe a sticky header. Um, but also I know drop shadow, I think there's a ticket going around. There's there's progress being made towards uh, doing a drop shadow, which I'm sure will eventually be in the theme.json as well. Yeah, I literally just built my own custom drop shadow a month ago and, and now Core, uh, WordPress is gonna have their own. Uh, so fun. Uh, yeah, uh, we have a, uh, Doug is raising his hand. You oh yeah. A, yeah. Hi. Hey, uh, I just was checking and I noticed that uh, whenever I hit the large uh, for the paragraph block and select large and I look at it on the uh, developer tools and it has an important uh, tag to that. Is there a reason for that? I don't, you know. Um, well, I hate that we have to it's, use important, yeah. but um, is you, is that in the editor or is it in the the generated front end? It's in the front end, yeah. Okay. Um, it's the you know has large font size uh, selector, and it yeah. has it. There, I mean, there's a good reason for it is uh, because um, it's kind of impossible to know like what other styles are like you know, from plugins or themes or like hitting that. And this is like a user choice to like, you know, choose that large size. So we want to make sure that, uh, you know, it gets priority. Um, and I mean, I, I would think that's probably like the biggest reason. Um, 
and because i mean i mean if you've ever you know you create themes and you know how a plugin can overwrite something or vice versa um like just with you know just a, a any old css uh so but what if you want to overwrite it yourself <laughs> well as a theme author or like no it's just as a user just putting in a style sheet you know or well i had to um, import i had to set up a class and then uh, do my oh own. okay i under, understand like you want to overwrite the actual size of it yeah. um yeah um the best way would be um uh, can you yeah i mean do you have access to that on in the interface i know you can override uh override it via you know theme json um I guess if like we had the uh, custom CSS thing, you could target the um, the CSS property, uh, which would be like uh, dash dash uh, WP preset. Um, yeah, font, uh, font size, I think. Um, yeah. Yes, it, it, Doug, is that something you're trying to do sort of globally for the large um, font size or or individually? Uh, uh, and the mm -hmm. next question, of course, is does that particular theme let you choose custom sizes I've, for fonts if if it's in the block? Yeah, I was just using the latest beta version, you know, and, and I noticed that in a couple of other themes that I'm working on. Uh, I've been using um, not necessarily the block editor or Gutenberg only for, uh, you know, posts and wanted to make it so that if somebody wanted to, when they're putting their post in, if they want to have a little bit of a larger font size, without being too large or without having a separate section. So I I okay, I can override that, but I also have to put an important in on my side to do that. that yeah, makes sense. yeah, I think if you're doing it via CSS, you can actually just override the custom property instead of using an, another important. Um, yeah. I, I, yes, I can, but, uh, but yeah. my users necessarily can't because it's a hidden yeah. one, you know. Um, or as a developer, if you're if you're setting the theme up so that your users can do it, you can create another, you can add another font size instance to theme JSON, and then use those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, my prefer preference would be uh, opening up the uh, custom font size uh, through theme.json if you uh, have access to do that um, uh, for other people or you know, other users. No. Uh, and um, did that help any? I hope so. No. Um, <laughs> I, just, I was just curious about the important because I mean, even if you're using a plugin and it overwrites it, and you're using the plugin, <laughs> that may be what they want, you know, and they can't. Yeah. Um, Easily. I mean, I, I can yeah. I can set that up and make it change, right? But my users aren't me. You know, yeah, they aren't yeah. not necessarily going to go in and figure it out. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to sit down and like just walk through some scenarios with you if you want to like ping me on Slack sometime. Uh, I think we can like kind of like just dive into the code a bit and like figure out um, a solution um, that, you know, works for the specific situation. Yeah, um, I, I've been able to get around it. Let's put it that yeah. way. <laughs> you know, my users can't. <laughs> so if they want to have it large, but not as large as it is. Yeah, I, I think we can just, uh, the best options yeah. are really just, uh, you, you know, uh, allow for a custom font size, uh, which would overwrite uh, those choices or or create some other sizes uh, for them to choose from. Um, yeah, okay. I was just curious because I know that, if, you know, whenever I start seeing a lot of importance in a, you know, <laughs> CSS, it just kind of triggers me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I, I, I get it. I'm so, I'm the same. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs> sure. I see. I'm gonna skip back. Um, I see Michael. Um, I apologize. Hen Hentula uh, question: Is this move towards per block styling and CSS a good move? It seems like we're going back coupling content and design rather than setting styles that control design from a more global universal space? <clears throat> hmm. The big I, question. Uh, yeah. 
I think uh, that probably depends how you're implementing it because mm -hmm. we've got the global styles to try to say in general, like these are the fonts we're using all over the theme. These are the colors we're setting. These are the this, these are the that. But once in a while there will be an, you know, and normally your uh, uh, quote block should look like this and you're, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But you are going to want sometimes to modify an individual block somewhere because the predefined design doesn't fit it. But all the styles for a WordPress, for a page on a WordPress themes are inline. So all your all your custom properties are in line all the blog styles are in line to the element so how we author it and how it's how it's written to the page don't seem to have that much of a connect and i worry about inline styles because they add weight to the page that may not be necessary i think that there is, um, I think we're heading in the right direction. <laughs> I think that, yes, I, um, inline styles can be concerning at times, but I think that um, with theme.json and just kind of abstracting CSS away um, into JSON objects and JSON data, that's going to allow kind of um, a long-term benefit of taking all these different layers because because we're I mean core is going to we're trying to consolidate the core styles with you know theme and plugin styles and then end user styles give the end user maybe whether we want to or you know based on a site give that option also and and take those and fuse them all together and make and set you know the 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 end goal is to set it all up for success, right? And make it look good. So I think um, there may be some duplication of the output of CSS right now. And I, I don't think it's, it seems minimal. I mean, really, but I think that in the end, we'll see that getting refined more and more and it really just the CSS will get uh, faster and leaner, I think. I've already seen that benefit since <laughs> the early days of Gutenberg, for sure. Well, yeah, they've improved a lot regarding yeah. loading block styles yeah. only where the block is actually appearing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, kind of going back to the, jumping back to Michael's original question, uh, is, it, is it a good move to couple these things? Uh, uh, with, I think, uh, I mean, there's a you can go as deep as you want, like uh, in terms of like saying, like, I want to allow users to, you know, modify, like, uh, put put in individual block styles. Uh, but you can also like disable all of that as a developer. Um, like you can turn off all the per block stuff, like in the post editor um, and really style the website as as kind of a holistic, uh, you know, global thing. Um yeah, I, I, I don't know how I feel about like, you know, saying I want to put this, make this paragraph blue or, you know, this text white. And then, you know, next year I have, um, you know, a blue background or, or something on the website. Uh, that's something that I've struggled with. So like, you know, I tend to like turn a lot of that off um, for like, you know, I, I mostly just do friends and family websites now. Uh, so like, I just like disable a bunch of that um and just give them the raw, like just the basic tools um all right um let's see lisa will it be possible at some point to work with negative margins via the spacing and theme.json <clears throat> that's a good question uh um, technically uh it is possible to register a custom uh, size, a uh, spacing size. I don't know if that was supposed to be possible or not, um, but you can set a negative size that's registered um, and it works, or it did a few weeks ago when I when 6.1 was, was released. Um, 
I think the disconnect is between what you can set on theme.json and what the user and the UI can kind of uh, see and do. Because right, it's because now we're using the steps, right? So in that case, it would probably be a step system. Uh, I don't or... know if you can. Re well, there are the there are two ways to register a custom space and size, and you can just do the uh, steps, right? And the, or you can just like fully like uh, add your own sizes. Um, through theme.json and that's yeah I, I have a uh a tweet somewhere where i was showing somebody uh a couple weeks back i think um like it works um i don't uh yeah it, i kind of I, I wouldn't want to play around with it too much like on a production site yet uh even if you kind of figure it out I'd, I'd like to wait for wordpress to mm -hmm uh make the ui better or the uh, the ux better yeah negative margins are hard uh to to give that your user experience that you need uh yeah you need in there yeah i think that that'll probably play out a little bit too with the positioning right because just um i mean in in my mind, I don't know if it's going to be <laughs> an application wise as far as the WordPress core, but you know, taking maybe a group block and being able to overlay it or say that it's going to be one's going to be on top of the other. There's some um, there's some complexity that's got to be solved, kind of in, in a in a smart way to do that and allow users to kind of interact in a UI level and the theme builders also be able to to set some settings uh, in a in a smart way so yeah um yeah you had one like bump up your zn index uh just you know one slot the next thing you know uh your it's your drop down menu is hidden behind it and yeah so there's yes it's a complex complex issue um yeah z index alone i don't know how yeah. that's a hard one to do a ui for unless you kind of I feel like and so you, yeah, you kind of have to have a, like a technical understanding of the background of what Z index does, but to service that in the UI, that's going to be an interesting solution. I'm sure there's a way. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so uh, we got any other questions? Oh, or Jessica says uh, CSS grid is a good way to overlap items, um, but yeah, and but that needs a proper implementation. Uh, that is true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's um, a great point too. <clears throat> I mean, if I can add on that, it's like, it feels a bit like Gutenberg is trying to, um, yeah, create CSS or recreate CSS properties more and more. Like we have now these border control that has been um, enhanced. And I think the problem is like, where do we use what we can or what's already implemented in the editor and when can we step into CSS and code it directly there, either via the style CSS or a custom CSS block that we mentioned earlier, or even at the individual block. So I think this, I think we need to maybe over time see what the best practices are to make things work either on a more global scale or on an individual scale for a block if we need it. Yeah. Um, yeah, like figuring out all of these best practices is just one of those things that is going to take time and conversations like this, uh, you know, writing on our blog, sharing what we've learned. Um, uh, that's what always uh, my favorite thing about the WordPress community is we need to like share our knowledge with each other. And we've always kind of done that. Um, so, Yes, uh, it's going to take a while to figure out all the best practices. And I'm also glad that's why, like, we, uh, even though like Gutenberg development uh, feels like it's like been pretty fast paced, it's also been slow in other ways. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I'm kind of happy for some of the, uh, like, we don't have, like, we didn't jump into, uh, for example, like uh, some kind of media query based, uh, you know, options for design tools. Um, and like, I think if you jump too fast in some of that, uh, you don't have time to really figure out the best ways to use them. 
Um, <clears throat> but yeah, good points. Do we have other questions in the uh, chat or anybody want to uh, chime in with questions? I have a question about typography. The whole reason why I ask about the merging of CSS versus the editor at the beginning is because there are things that you can do with typography in CSS that are not part of the typography in the editor yet. And I'm wondering how, whether it's going to be possible or not. Like I'm thinking about using um, font variants and open type features that are very font dependent. So my thought was always use CSS. But if we're pushing for theme.json to become the source of truth, and the one point and the single point of authoring, so to speak, how do we get this to, to work or to work in a way that it's gonna not gonna break the system? I think there's a, it's interesting to see, like even Jessica hinted at the the idea of having, you know, I don't know, I think we can speculate or whatever, but whether there will be absolute parity between every CSS property and the, and the UI, I don't think that's, you know, technically and probably practically feasible, you know. Um, so I think there will always kind of be a need for some custom CSS, like you know, using some kind of custom font ligatures and passing a property for that. You know, that's a perfect example of I can't imagine, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know if there will ever be a UI to surface something like that. Maybe, hopefully. Yeah. But on the other hand, we did work, we do support variable fonts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's I mean, that. that's yeah. what. That's what's always been my my tug between using theme.json and between just using plain CSS. It gets really confusing as to where is the line that it has been drawn where I should stay on CSS or whether I should stay on theme.json. Um, yeah, so like, I just kind of try to follow like what's new in Gutenberg, what's new in WordPress. Uh, if there's, you know, uh, an option available via theme JSON, then I'm going to use that. Um, if not, you know, just, I just jump back over to CSS. Um, and it's not always like, uh, I, you, you hate, like I, I said, there's a bot shadow feature that's coming. Um, it's like, if you, have a theme that relies heavily on bot shadows, you know, right now it's all in your CSS. Um, you know, three or four months from now, um, you know, it may be now you're having to recode your theme to, uh, you know, make use of the uh, theme JSON version of that. Um, and it's kind of, a, it is a pain, if, especially if you're dealing with a lot of clients or if you're a, a theme developer with a business. Uh, so it's, uh, I hate to, say like you just got to keep up with it but technology is always changing um um where do you draw the line like if you're trying to plan for the future um i think we're like we're pretty close to like i think where we uh wordpress is pretty close to where it should be uh in terms of like what css features it's going to support as design tools um there's probably a few left um but like the, we've got like the major things covered color background shadow i'm not shadow uh border um typography the the primary typography tools um, i think a lot more of that's just going to be around refining uh how those tools work and i don't know uh so any uh i don't see like a supporting uh, a more kind of niche uh, typography uh, things, unless they just become uh, pretty popular. Yeah. Any other thoughts on that? <laughs> yeah, I think that's 
it's uh, yeah it's kind of i don't know i hate to say it, like edge case but yeah it's certainly a value when you need it <laughs> definitely um I saw, a, I don't know, that just brought me to, brought to mind the, the, the work being done for a font management kind of interface, which is on, mm -hmm. is currently underway, which is pretty neat, but I'm sure yeah. a lot of complexity to solve there. Yeah, I'm really excited to see like what happens with uh, the font manager, um, yeah. like just fonts in general or uh, or seem like they're always a hard problem to solve ever since I've been developing on the web. Um, yes. Yeah. But uh, I think the current, I mean, the theme.json implement, implementation of pulling in custom fonts is a, is a little clunky for sure, um, especially it can be a barrier at times. So I think, yeah, it, it's definitely a, a needed um, feature, but there's so much, yeah, there's so much complexity to solve there, um, especially even with like variable fonts and having non, like, you know, different, unusual, different font weights that you can apply. So, yeah, but there's, they're definitely taking that, what I've seen, there's, there's considerations around all that. So. Mm. I'm reading through their chat a bit. Um, yeah, we do have a page that uh, has all like a living reference for the. Um, there's also uh, somebody asked if there was a a page for theme uh, JSON reference. So there's one link, but we also have uh, there's a living reference page uh, that I'm going to leave in the chat. Right. I'll try to. Uh, yeah. I wonder if I can. Oh, well, Michael already beat me to it. So <clears throat> I'll try to get these links so I can share them with the recording too. Okay. All right, did we, come on, let, let's get folks in the group to raise their hand. Uh, throw some hard ones. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's see. Um, Anybody uh, like or want to cover some of the uh, other phase two customization stuff? Yeah, I can share my screen again real quick. Let's see, I'm just adding. All righty. Um, I lost my, yeah. Get back here. There we go. Uh, yeah, here we, this is what we were kind of touching on the fixed position header and footer. We kind of already discussed a little bit. There's work being done around that. Oh, that would be pretty cool. Like, yeah, I've gotten that question a few times. You know, like developing with the like the side editor, like yeah, it's kind of hard to think about how do you do a fixed header. Like if a user comes in and like moves the header down below another block or something, or like how does that affect the entire page? Um, so you had to, we had to get things like uh, I think template uh, locking in first. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. <clears throat> Have anybody has anybody tried out uh like they it's called content only locking i don't like the name um because it's really uh you uh it, since 6.1 you can uh lock down the design and allow the user to only edit uh, like the content portions of uh, a, a block 
Um, I think you can put it on the group block, column, and cover blocks right now. Um, but it's all, uh, it's not, there's not a UI uh, way to do it. So you have to um, put it in your code. And you can put it in patterns or your templates. Um, it's kind of one of my favorite features. So like I can keep like, um, say like my cousin who, who is not very tech savvy, but he runs his own blog. And uh, I'd like to keep him from completely destroying it every other week. <laughs> uh, so, and and of course calling me because because i'm the uh administrator um yeah that's a great way to refine the kind of the editorial experience of what they can get in and edit you know um just the pieces they need to edit and not accidentally kind of delete an element that needs to to be there yeah um yeah, so like, uh, yeah, I mean, that's on my agenda over the holiday is to put some uh, locks on the header and footer and and uh, <laughs> or just pretty much everything that is not, a, you know, a, a color or something <laughs> or or text. Um, but he uh, he's done well with the like transition to, to block themes, actually, um, like he struggled forever with uh, the classic editor um and i was uh but i've had him on the uh on the block thing for a couple of years um so it's fewer questions anyway uh, but uh, we'll see how like now that he has like side editor editor access so we'll see how it goes <laughs> here's an interesting one make it easy to copy and paste the block styles this kind of ties into i guess um Hmm. Well, actually, no, it made me just think of how there we just looked at a ticket around custom CSS for a per block basis, too. So I wonder how I, I would assume that would tie together somehow. If you copy the styles, if there's custom CSS, that would could get pretty tricky. <laughs> huh. I, I have not seen that one yet. I kind of want to go like there's is there a PR yet or is just a ticket? Uh, I want to go play around uh, with it. Yeah, no, it says needs dev, uh, so it's just been through design. So it's really neat. That's a great feature, though. Yeah. Sure. All right. Uh, yeah, I think Damon and I are uh, we we, we uh, we're probably running out of content, so we're just we can get. <laughs> yeah. Um, if anybody has like. Yeah, we want to make sure, like, for uh, seriously, like, if there are like any questions related to uh, theme development or even plugin development, block development, if you want to throw those out there, even though it's a more of a themes meeting. Yeah, don't be shy. <laughs> Here's the uh, font library work. But this again, this is all future, future forward stuff. It will be really nice to have that integrated in the UI somehow. I mean, it's pretty straightforward how to do it in theme JSON with the font families, but it, it still took me a couple of tries. Uh, mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Um I think at a certain point, uh, the theme JSON, a lot of times, like if you're just hand coding that, uh, it, all the nesting can start like getting confusing. Yeah. Um, there is a plugin, uh, that I've seen like a YAML version, uh, like to create your theme JSON. Um, if you're, if you prefer YAML, you can, you know, you could leave comments in there and, Mm. Yeah, kind of, I pretty much never touched YAML, so. Yeah. Um, and, of course, uh, there's the create block theme, uh, too. Uh, is that yeah. Carlos ch chiming in? No, go ahead, Justin. Oh, you, you, you're you up. <laughs> okay, this is something that has always bugged me. If if an item in the theme.json file is wrong or it's placed in or it's wrongly placed or it has an error in it will the entire item that that is attached to fail to parse or is it just that item that gets ignored 
uh, the whole thing messes up. Yeah. Okay, experience. that's what I figured. <laughs> yeah, so I've been, uh, I've been lucky so far. Yeah, um, yeah, e everything breaks. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. you know, um, Sally, one thing that I do is I lint my JSON file online. I will post a link to the linter I use so that I know if it's broken before I before I paste the code into my to my installation into my theme and that has saved me a lot. the the errors that it gives you are hard to parse but it's a lot better than trying to figure out in WordPress what got broken yeah because there yeah there's no like error reporting on the WordPress side for the JSON and I uh, believe me I, I I've like <laughs> I don't know how many times I've like, why, you know, is this not working? And it'd be yes. a straight comma Car or something. Carlos, that, that sounds like a brilliant idea. Yeah. <laughs> um, there is okay. like, um, I think there is some tooling. Like I know okay. I mean, this is probably pretty technical. I don't know, but um, for VS code, which I use, there is like, mm -hmm. you can see in line, you know, it'll, underlying items that are kind of mistyped or you know not nested properly if you have the um what's the key entry at the top the, basically the schema. A, yeah the schema yeah, the schema. yeah. so yeah. that's one way i'm trying to think of uh yeah the j uh jsonlint.com which carlos linked uh is a great tool um i've used it in the past um but yeah, I, I've only switched to VS Code like two or three months ago. So, um, like it's yeah, it's definitely changed the way I uh, I write code for WordPress. Um, mm -hmm. Far fewer errors. <laughs> Very much so. Um, hey, I'm the person too that spent like ten years on Notepad, like Windows Notepad, like coding. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I'm glad I graduated. Yeah. Oh God! When I first started building websites, it, 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 I was writing in Microsoft Word with macros to add all of the tags, and saving uh, it as plain text. Nineteen ninety four. Yeah, we're we're a bit sp spoiled today, really. <laughs> oh, we've got such great tools to do this with. Um. But yeah, so if yeah, if you make a mistake in the your theme JSON, and yeah, you'll get uh, if you you like your front end, it'll be uh, if you'll have the wrong colors, wrong fonts, everything. It just it, uh, it won't work. You'll still have a website; it just won't look really good. Yeah, I shared the link. I think this was kind of where I got my setup from. Uh, yeah, this post here. Yeah, make sure you, uh, you're putting the schema at the top of your file, and it'll save you a lot of headaches. Yeah. The schema and the version. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yep, a good point. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, this was a yeah, this was another one that I was looking at earlier, but again, future forward and needs dev, so it's not even in development yet. Um, but this deal, I've heard a lot of kind of requests around this of being able to manage and switch between different style variations and even uh, themes in general. So this is pretty interesting exploration and progress yeah um global styles theme switching and uh i don't know like I, I part of it feels like this uh like you know pipe dream a little bit like getting all this to work um but i think it would be it could be exciting uh i think we're gonna really have to change our mindsets about like developing uh, themes or at least like publicly released themes um mm -hmm. to like where the whole theme is just not ours like there may be pieces that get 
taken apart and mixed with like other themes uh you know or you know patterns from different themes different styles uh it's going to be interesting but i don't um uh, to watch well you know your design was never going to survive its first encounter with the user yeah uh, it, it just it just doesn't no matter what it, 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 no matter what you're using to build it uh it, you know some some tools make it easier for people to turn it the you know the site you built into geo cities than others but <laughs> oh yeah unless right. you're unless you're talking about a custom design for a client versus a, a theme for many people to be able to use there's a limit to how much you can lock down yeah uh -huh. and anyone smart hand, enough can unlock it yeah but on the other hand having to you not knowing where the structure of the site comes from it's also a little problematic because how many block plugins do you have to install to get your site running and what at least I've always told people, be mindful of the number of plugins that you have on your site to avoid bloat. Uh -huh. So if we're trying to stand, so trying to come up with a, comp again, it's a compromise. And I totally agree with you, Justin. That was one of the first things I wrote when I started working with Gutenberg, that is a change of mindset. Uh-huh. Yeah, um, and that's very hard for some of us that have been around for uh, for far too long. Uh, I still and, use the classic editor. Yeah, um, my workflow is such that trying to use the the block editor is a real pain in the neck that I'm still trying to figure out. Yeah, well, I'm not gonna lie, I, I write in Markdown uh, offline. Mm -hmm. You know. Yep. Um, that's you know that's what I do, and I'm I'm glad the block editor like accepts that and like converts it for me. Um, that's really awesome. Um, but we all have our own workflows in terms of that. Um, you know, own you know preferred editors. Um, but yeah, uh, but yeah, we will uh, like uh, going back to changing our mindsets about uh, development. Um, I think there's like a part of you that has to let go of like some of those like like the things that like are really entrenched like in your mind like how you build um, and that uh, that's sometimes it's scary um, and like you and you're also like really comfortable with like the tools that you've known for two three or ten years or whatever um, so I, like it took me a while to like really jump on to like block themes uh and like well like, let go of some of the things like I wanted to control um like I'm, I'm a control freak uh in terms of design and development and like just one day I was like I've got to quit this like it's gonna drive me crazy trying to like fight against the system um and just like really uh appreciate like the good things about it and uh, try to use those to my advantage and i'll just like ramble on and on about that if y'all let me uh <laughs> yeah i i know from i mean just kind of my agency background that i you know when even i think it was 5.8 um i you know quickly embraced uh the theme.json and it would happen to be coincide with a project that with a client that had um basically four or five kind of micro brands within the site so they had a kind of a a general style um and then they had these three or four different uh products underneath the same site with different colors so it was an interesting solve but it was kind of the cutting edge at the time and i had to Really, uh, and I ended up, I remember registering lots of colors in the theme.json, but trying to keep them organized and labeled properly. And, um, but yeah, I think it, it's hard to make that time sometimes. And, but you just, whether you can set aside a, an hour today or <laughs> an hour tomorrow, and just try try to chip away at a new um, different implementation that of something new that came out in core, then 
it's going to benefit you in the long run. All right. Yeah, I'm good. Uh, we do have a question in, uh, in the chat. Is that Mar Marquio, Marcio? I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name. Um, a more business related question. Do you personally think there's still room for premium uh, non-bespoke themes? Uh, he thinks it might be mainly because of the lack of a good chunk of CSS features, uh, but wants to know what we think. Um, I'll, I'll go say, I, I think there's um, plenty of opportunity for uh, the premium theme uh, companies uh, to uh, really take advantage of like these new tools. I mean, now is a great time to like get a head start. Like while there's only, you know, what, less than 200 like free thing, you know, block themes. Um, I think um, you know you know might have to change the how the businesses run like what features uh, there might be a lot of experimentation about what you can upsell or you know if you're doing like a freemium model um, but I mean I, I could see like uh, you can use something like patterns along with uh, style variations to like just take one theme and like build these like different uh, variations for you know, like a restaurant or, or say if you have a restaurant theme, you can have different variations for, uh, you know, a pizza place or, you know, a taco stand or whatever it may be. Uh, uh, there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of room for experimentation there for, for sure. There are companies that are starting to work on things like block patterns and mm -hmm. integration. They haven't necessarily, you know, made the jump fully to, uh, FSE, but I think there's as much market as there ever was. I mean, I've mm -hmm. I've had colleagues argue, no, 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 there's really, there's just not going to, you know, your theme is just going to be this sort of empty shell and people will put things in it. And I was like, mm -hmm. no, most people are not designers, right? I mean, I have some clients that they want to place every single pixel on the page, but most clients do not want to try to figure out how to design it, how, how to make it, you know, like no tool is going to turn anyone into a designer. So if you can create something that is cohesive and attractive and useful and accessible, you definitely have an opportunity to sell that. Yeah. I, yeah. I think it's just, yeah, you, you, you've got to uh, provide something of value that people see and that to feel like you're kind of walking along with them on their, their journey uh, in terms of like getting their side up, uh, um I, uh, for me i, I did run a, a theme business for a, a little over a decade um and uh I, I, the biggest thing i always focused on was support uh and like just being there for the customer more so than like um you know what fancy features i, I may build they just want a website where they could put their i want to put my stuff here um and share it with the world or or you know have a business i want to sell this or you know or i got i want to put this music video um and they just want simple solutions um and not to uh, most of them you of course you do have the people who want to uh, again uh recreate uh geo cities on their website or and that's that's fun too you know i i enjoyed the early you know web uh that's what i came up on blink tags <laughs> yeah i think i would say that i think um there definitely is a gap as far as I would love to see like a plugin, and but I think this is plugin territory, but it could be done in a theme too, a premium theme area. But um, animations, I think, are a big kind of thing, and, and but it's a tricky slope because you want to do it, handle it carefully and gracefully, and uh, so that would be an interesting, I think, uh, exploration. <clears throat> I think it, uh, sometimes uh, going back to premium themes, like I think it can be hard to be exclusively a theme company. Like um, there, I mean, there's probably there's I'm sure there are success stories still today. Um, but like uh, usually you're building around some other plugin or or you know another you know service or something. Um, mm. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, that's not really my area of expertise anymore. So, um, 
Well, I know we're coming up on time here. Yeah, we want to try to get in a, a last question from anybody. Yeah. Um, or two minutes left. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, I guess yeah, yeah we can uh yeah, we can go ahead and wrap it up then. Thank you. Thanks everybody for making it out today and thank you. Yeah. Enjoy Good to the see rest everyone. of your day. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks. All right. Bye.